Then you can come in from the back. You can even put the two screws in. They really milk this riff for what it's worth, huh? Oh, love it though. This way it's going to be perfect. We really built three or four times for what it's worth. Danny's so willing to dive into three or four and so great. Oh, pilot hole? Psh, pilot hole, fuck. Alright, uh... You guys, when in doubt, pilot hole. This is such a small hole. You fucked this thing up. Yeah, fuck. yeah I mean, I, I'm annoyed that I didn't think to suggest that, first of all. Pilot hole, then you can just drift. If you're crooked, you can just wobble it over. Mm -hmm. That is the size of drill bit that I break. The hardest thing for me is not drilling into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like if I could, it would be so much more comfortable if I didn't have to <laughs> worry about so that. Irresistible. There's that moment when you have a big heavy drill like that when you would think you broke the drill bit. My train to pick again still. <laughs> it can be forever your turn one. Yeah. Be forever your turn. Forever, forever. Ooh. All right, let's hope this shit works. Dude. Now I gotta do the stupid spring thing. Yay, stupid spring thing. Oh. First try. Nice. I'm good at this. I wish I knew where that pickup actually came from and its real age and story and stuff. Wait, did I just put it in the one? No, this is the old one. <laughs> okay. You put it in the thinner one, right? <laughs> oh. Okay, so the two screws on the top. Slightly off center, but... That's good. It'll, it'll give you an asymmetrical tone. See, at this point, because we're good to go, I think I actually want to swap the volume pot out first so we don't have these wires in the way. Before we put the... Before we... Yeah, exactly. Cool. So, let me trade you spots. I'm just not going to do this one again because that was a pain in the ass. See what I'm saying? Yep. Putting that one through. And this one we'll put it through later. This one we'll give it to a homeless shelter. <coughs> The shelters need stock pickups. I think we make a good team. Yeah. You're gonna give that homeless shelter that pickup, and they're gonna be like, "Wait, what is this from? This is a stock Epiphone pickup." Epiphone SG, baby. And they're just gonna Special. throw it at your head. It'd be like that Seinfeld episode where they gave them the muffin stems so they could sell the muffin tops, and the, like the homeless people rejected the muffin stems. <laughs> Okay, so I figured out why there's this extra blue wire feed, I think. What I think is going on is that the blue wire goes to where the pickup feed comes in from the pickup selector and goes to the tone knob section of your tone pot, whereas the gray wire, which comes from the wiper and goes normally goes straight to your plug, that goes to the kill switch first to then get killed or not because you want to short out the signal at the plug to do the kill switch action. It says Shadow on it. So maybe Shadow is the company that we could have Googled <laughs> to find out the deal behind the kill switch. Yeah. The monstrosity. So... You gotta have at least a 40 watt iron to do this back part because it takes a lot of heat to get this lump of ground action. And the whole case has to get hot too, so I have to that's why I hold it from back here. No, I'm not touching the part that's getting hot. Okay. And if you forget which one goes to the wiper, which is the center pin, just look at the one that's going to the jack. Because the jack is where you wipe from. Then you see this far pin that's hooked to ground, which is the case ground. This is the thing you want to make sure before you do this, 
is that these are the same height and like they're not so let's make sure that they're close. <laughs> I want to show this though. I'm pretty sure these are the same pot company made these. Let's check it out. So made in Korea, it's an Indonesian guitar and look at the ink and the marking, this other part down here is cast identically too. So I'd bet, I'd bet my mom that these were made in the exact same factory, coincidentally. I bought mine on eBay and they're freaking identical. That's super unusual that we'd be able to put in like an identical drop in replacement. Oh, and it fits gorgeous. This will be fine. This is too perfect. In fact, it's gonna get one washer, then go in there, and then another washer, and then the, uh, what do you call this? Nut. All right, to get that blob of solder on the back, that you solder everything to, you actually have to do it in a couple steps. You have to do the blob first without trying to make any wires stick to it at first. I'm right on top of the pot. Cool. So I like to tin everything first, and I like to make my blob near my ground terminal. So I'm going to make sure that it's getting... See, I'm touching the solder to the tip a little bit just to get it started flowing, but now, see, I want to make sure that I'm seeing the back of the thing actually melt the solder. And I'm gonna go ahead and tin these pins a little bit early. Sometimes if they're dirty, the solder doesn't wanna to stick to them. But this was in a nice Tupperware container for the last five years. And then, this ground wire, I need some ground wire to short between my ground pin and the case. So I'm gonna clean this one up and let it make that bridge. Just making it just long enough. Stripped it, twisted it, gonna push it through the hole in the pin, in the lug. You see, I push the solder onto the part, push the iron onto the part, got the part hot with the iron. That's the secret to soldering, is that the hot part's gotta melt the solder. So I'm getting this solder hot with the iron, madding a little bit. Solder has flux in it, so whenever you add to that joint, uh, add wire to it, you also have to add a little bit of solder the flux helps the whole joint happen. But above all else, all the parts have to be hot enough to melt the solder. If your parts aren't hot enough to melt solder, then your parts aren't going to stick and you're going to have cold solder joints. So, you melt the solder with the part. The way my dad always used to say it was you, you melt the solder with the part, not the iron. The part melts the solder, not the iron. The iron gets the part hot, and the hot part melts the solder. This is the easiest with helping hands. I, I might have brought them too. Yeah, if you, if you have to hold the thing and it keeps wiggling, the joints are always gonna be crappy. And if you, you can't take it to the next level without helping hands. At one point, nothing made me better at soldering until I started using these things. Then it started getting pretty. These helping hands are hella old, but obviously they haven't changed any. Sometimes I'll, I'll have two sets of these helping hands. You also have my hands. Not the same. 
one and a half down. <laughs> with that joint because it came out great so I'm gonna make another little pad right here sometimes the back of the pot's really hard to solder to if it's uh, gotten corroded or anything but this one's doing great did you see that I made sure that all the solder got hot and I held the iron long enough that I could tell that this thing got hot enough that the solder was like spreading on it. If the solder wants to curl up on something, it's too cold. But if the solder starts to like have this nice slopey meniscus on it, then it's hot enough. So now let's throw the wires through because this fellow's tight and happy. Come on, then we'll, then we'll solder the, the pickups on. That'll be easy. Whoa there. Hey there. Little filler. Doing this without scratching your guitar is the most impossible concept. <laughs> There's so many jagged, heavy blocks of madness. You just slow down and bang into it. We're doing pretty good. It's just an epic one anyway. <laughs> it's got a really pretty finish though. So, yep, you put the bridge on before the neck again. <laughs> well, I hope you at least remember to to unscrew before you screwed in, so we didn't I make did. new threads. You're good at that now. All right, now we've got the pickups really in there. I can't make a big enough deal about how important it is to turn that screwdriver backwards within a turn until you feel it fall into the threads. It really preserves the holes. It stops it from stripping and getting new threads. Ooh, we heard it that time. Ah, that combo of pickups looks so cool. SGs of mismatched pickups, man. That's like a type. And I like it. That's like a... Is that your type? That's Is like that your, a... a the fetish? Yeah. That's my porn hope search. SG with mismatched pickups. <laughs> no results, but you know, it's, yeah. the, what's that plate called on the back? Back plate. No idea. Yeah. There it is. What's my name? Oh no. <laughs> of course, we lost the screw. <laughs> Man. I'm used to losing a screw on a laptop where no one sees it. No, you even warned me too, you were like, this is cool. Yeah, look at this. A good heavy bowl, so the bowl doesn't get away from you, it doesn't get knocked into or elbowed. Because you never end up elbowing a big ceramic bowl, it's pretty like this. It's, it's got to be underneath the guitar somewhere. With a it could have, but I think it's in the folds underneath there. Okay, there's those two cheese. Look on pickups, to see if it's stuck to it. Oh, you know. Because it's a magnet, it's often stuck to it. I would hate that if I find out that it's inside of this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna murder somebody. It's so, the, the screw for this is probably in there, stuck to one of the magnets. It's probably inside under there. It's more than likely the case. <laughs> I'm looking on the ground. Yeah. I can just not put the third or the fourth screw in there. You could, but it'll haunt you. You know the next time I change the screw the, under there. Next time I change the strings, I'm gonna do it. Next time you change the strings, you're gonna take a look under there? Yeah. <laughs> For now. And then it won't be there, and we'll be like, oh. For now, this is gonna do. You got the big knob on there. Do you have the the niche in it where you want it? You're just gonna put up with it, baby. I don't care. Enough about that, I never look at it. 
I like that it has the the cream tip on it now too, it's a little black tip. Dad's gonna bust the shit out of it. <laughs> oh well. Wait, how the hell am I gonna take it off though? Without fucking up the I can't take off the pickup because there's no well, slack. Well, you're supposed to leave a little bit of slack. So we're gonna put an extension? We have to put a little slack on this one to even make it where it needs to go. Oh, so you so might as well give it a decent slack. slack. Yeah, there'll be slack. Alright, let's start a pickup with an extension. And they were golden. I'm just gonna take a little bit of length off this just because this is a lot. Way too, way too long, yeah. Okay, so. Now your job is to look at your phone picture and find out which pin had the red wire and which pin had the black wire. And we know the red wire was the neck, where I thought the red wire was the bridge. How much do you want to bet that like we do it backwards the first time? <laughs> well, red was on top. You know what, I could look at how the switch flips too and find out also, but that's okay. Uh, red was on top, neck was on top, bridge on the bottom. I'm gonna hook my green and white wires back up. Do you have any electrical tape? Yeah. Cool. Okay, this Always sandwich. Hold on. Tape. Oh, you're already recording it. You always want to sandwich it and go sticky to sticky. So it's totally surrounded by this sticky on sticky thing. This wire is too thin for my stripper, so I have to use my fingernail. Next time we're going to do the ground. i got to bring the ground in kind of close because it has a, a tendency to wobble over and short against something. There's also the fun random chance that these pickups are going to be out of phase with each other and we'll have to reverse one or the other one. We're going to reverse the Demarzia because it's not in a metal case. It's dangerous, not dangerous really, but like if you reverse the ground on a pickup with a metal case like this burst bucker, then whenever you touch, touch the case it's like touching the touching the end of a guitar cable and it buzzes a lot and like it'll like it'll hum whenever you touch the case of the pickup. So I'm gonna tin this wire first so that I can just heat it and heat the pin and have them join each other. But I'm gonna wait and do the ground all, all together. I'm stealing some wire from the bridge pickup here. Just so you have some service slack. Okay, just in case of phase, I'm not gonna solder or tape over this splice yet. And that's where we'll reverse it if our phase is wrong. It's hard to get stop one from running away once everything's all heated up. It's tough because that it takes a lot of heat to get that lug at the back of this thing all liquid. One way or the other always wants to run away. We need to fire to help position. Maybe. No, I got it. Yeah, I was able to hold them further down the wire and not burn myself. Okay, test play time. Yeah, those are all very much in there. Too short and I got it got too hot from when I was soldering the ground there. Oh, and I, I melted the insulation some. 
This black one's fine, but it looks like we've got ground and signal touching a little bit on that one, so I'm going to cut it and redo it. So when it went silent for a second and the hum went away, that was actually bad, because it was the hum going away from it shorting, like that, like the kill switch does. I moved it and it shorted. Go ahead and put it on standby or something now though. So I'm actually going to ground it. I'm going to ground this wire on something else. I've got a ground pin right here on the kill switch. Yeah. It's so loud even though it's nowhere near the strings right now. So I don't hear how loud it will be. I don't any change on any metal touching any other metal. Sounds absolutely amazing. That's so creamy. I can't wait to hear the, this one on the bridge on that one. Sometimes you do some really thin bridge stuff that has like a lot of harmonic character to it, and then it'll be nice how the first bucket will cut through more on that. But you'll have some great solid body to hold things down from that neck. And that beepiness is pretty. What beepiness? It's. I think it's more rounded and beepy on the neck than, and rather than changely. Those strings need to be stretched out again. Yep. Sound like shit. There's shit strings anyways, those are the strings that came with the fucking guitar, so. No way! Yeah. It sounds that good with these pickups with the strings that came with it. Yep. That burst bucker can come way closer. Mm-hmm. At least a couple millimeters, that's part of it. And it's like, it's so tilted wrong. It's tilted too much, I thought, right? Yeah. It can tilt it back some. Yeah, it's supposed to be tilting towards the bridge. The bridge is supposed to be higher. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Is the... The panel's that way, right? The, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. I was gonna say... The frame... See? The two screws. I hate it, because now it's like... It's tilted. You had one other screw, then you could make it tilt better. Now they're the same level. Yeah. This one just got so much more. Is the middle quieter? Because if the middle is quieter, it's out of phase. Oh, no. It doesn't sound out of phase to me. The middle one's quieter. How much quieter? 